Hey, today we're going to do something fun. We're going to put some carpet in this car. But not just any carpet. This is our new mass back carpet from Auto Custom Carpet. This is some good stuff. I'm going to get to that later. But this is Lynn's car. A lot of you know Lynn. He's the guy that answers the phone about 60% of the time here. Class Curtis, Lynn, may I help you? And he's been lamenting lately because he has no time to work on his car. Springtime, we get a lot of calls. He's been working overtime. He's been working Saturdays. And uh, his car just sits and laments. So today we're going to surprise him. And we're going to put the carpet in for him. The first thing you're going to notice about this carpet, not only the size of the box, but the weight. 35 pounds. That's about triple of what the normal carpet weighs. Comes in two pieces, just like factory, front and rear. It's heat molded. A lot of times you'll take your car to an upholstery shop and they'll say, no problem, let us do the carpet. Beware, a lot of them are taking flat carpet and cutting and, and gluing and molding. That's never gonna be like factory. You wanna get the heat molded stuff that contours to your floor pan. Auto Custom Carpet is the only one that does this. Already sewn in is the heel pad and the toe pad. The toe pads weren't on all, all Cougars, so you purist might want to take this out. But really, it functions to keep it clean here and not wear your carpet down. So I like leaving this little piece in. You have thick, molded on, sound deadening material here. Heavy, dense stuff. The beauty about this stuff is for heat, this car has air conditioning. This is going to make the air conditioner work that much more efficient. For your stereo, you're going to keep out road noise. This to me is, is, is a good investment because of how much quieter it makes the cockpit of your car. Also, you'll see that it has the uh, insulation bonded to it, just like our normal carpet. So, let's get going on this install. First thing we got to do is get that car in the air and get the seats out. Take the seats out, standard screwdriver, deep half inch socket, short extension, and your ratchet. You got eight bolts underneath, actually eight nuts, four per side. this car is such low miles and such good conditions it was stored for many years. The people that owned it didn't know about dryer sheets. If you're going to store your car for a long time, stuff dryer sheets in hidden places around the car. Mice and rats hate them. Because this carpet got damp, you can really smell the mice. So we're not going to miss this carpet. It's original, but oh well, it's time for it to go. Oh, look at this. This is what every owner hopes to find underneath their uh, original carpet. Nice. Well, the good news is no rust and we've caught it in time that uh, shouldn't be any damage. So what we're going to do now is pull out, carefully pull out all this original underlayment and we're going to let it dry for a day.
we're choosing to use this original sound deadener. We're going to let it dry for a couple days. But this is heavy, dense stuff. The reproduction that, that uh, we sell and other vendors sell, light. Look at how thin the tar is and how thick the fluff is. Exact opposite on the original. Hardly any fluff embedded in there and lots of tar. Part of the reason they don't uh, um, sell too many products that equal original is the shipping would be astronomical. If you want something that is equal to or better than original, you should check your local stereo store. They have products like Dynamat. There's probably about 15 different name brands. We're ready to start putting the carpet in. We've got the underlayment dry, we've vacuumed underneath, we've inspected the floor pans. Start, time to start fitting the carpet. First thing we want to do, make sure that battery is disconnected because we're going to turn the key in the on position on the 70 to 73s. This makes a difference because before, as you know, you can shift it into neutral. Got to have that key in the on position. You're going to be tempted to cut a big hole in here because you need a big hole for the shifter. Don't cut out the big hole here. We're going to start small with an X, and after it's fitted in place, we know for sure that we're ready to cut. Then we will cut a hole approximately this size. Work the carpet forward until you get this bonded on insulation on the flush part here. This is not intended to rise up the seat riser. It's meant to lay flat down here on top of the underlayment. I suggest you go uh, easy on the cutting. Cut two or three times if you have to, to get the right amount off. You can't put it back on after you've cut it. So we're going to go right to this ridge here. So I'm going to cut a second time right along here, but I'm going to wait until I've made sure that everything's firm in place. Okay, again, we're going to judge the correctness of the location of the carpet based partly on where this gray insulation lies. This is, should be flush against the seat riser here. Not up, not this way, not that way, but it should fill the void at the bottom of the rear floor pan. And as you move things around, this carpet's going to want to shift. So, I I'm going to nail it down. I'm going to find the location I want. And when I'm assured of that location, I'm going to go get four awls or four Phillips screwdrivers. And I'm going to puncture the carpet for the seat tracks. When I got the carpet where I want, I'm going to go ahead and pull a couple of these screwdrivers out and lay the seat studs in. This works on the 69 to 73, but keep in mind your 67, 68 has screws you have to put in from the side for the sill plates. We're going to loosely install two of the nuts underneath. We don't want to bolt this down all the way because we don't know for sure we got everything just right. We're pretty sure. But we're going to put a couple nuts in finger tight. Once you're satisfied with where the carpet is resting, now you cut your hole.
make sure their seal is replaced, this is a good time to do it. Two things here, this mass back carpet being thicker, your screws are gonna have a hard time reaching all the way through the bezel, through the thickness of the carpet, and into the threaded portion. Longer screws would be advised. Second thing, as careful as I was not to overshoot my hole, you'll see right here, I cut a little too much of the material out. This is a forgiving installation in that this is a console car. So we're lucky, but you without consoles, that would get on your nerves after a while, looking at your little cut that you made there forever. To nail down the console, you can do it from above, but it's so hard to probe into your carpet and find those tiny little holes for the console screw. I like to, if possible, go from the bottom side and probe through the carpet. Of course, you'll need somebody else up there holding the carpet because this mass back carpet is thick and dense, so you'll need somebody holding the carpet so you can protrude through the hole into the carpet and just leave the screwdriver sit there. There's no debating this mass back carpet is harder to install. It's more rigid, so before we put this console in, we want to make sure this carpet is set in place and really work it in. Okay, don't forget about our awl that's poking through here. We don't want to get it. So I'm going to gently slide my console over this protruding awl from the bottom. And that'll index where we need the console so we aren't searching from the top. Now even though we've located one of the holes indexing with the awl, it's still going to be a chore to probe and find the other holes. You'd think it'd be easy, but it's tricky. Don't over tighten these screws. These old consoles are very brittle. Be careful when you're using your awl to protrude. You don't want a fat one. You could break this console by wiggling it around. Not that I ever have. You will have to trim a substantial amount of carpet off around your sill plates, kick panels, and rear panels. Make sure to not cut too much off. Cut a couple times if you have to. Because the mass back carpet has this extra thickness here, we're going to struggle to get our sill plate on here with all this extra material. So, unlike regular carpet, we're going to have to do a relief cut and get rid of this underlying piece of carpet so everything will fit tight against the rocker. As with the console, I like to locate the holes prior to getting the seat in place. This keeps the carpet in place, keeps it from shifting, and just before I slip the seat down, I pull the screwdrivers out. When you're trying to cut the carpet for the seat belt bolt hole, it's easier to have the sill plate off. Even if you think you know where that bolt hole is, it can be mighty frustrating trying to locate it. There's always discussion about reproductions not being as good as original. Here's one that's far superior than original. We're actually not going to put this in the car because Lynn wants to keep the, uh, the originality intact on this car. And his original aluminum ones aren't that bad. But look how easy these uh, aluminum pieces bend. I mean, they're real thin. You can, you can just flex them with your thumbs. These new stainless steel ones look better and they aren't going to dent. When you let go of your seat belt, they aren't going to dent with the seat belt buckle. And if you ever do get them scuffed, scratched, or whatever, being stainless steel with no plating, you're going to be able to polish out that scuff. $70 retail, I think, for the pair. Good investment, good time to do them is when you do your carpet. I can't fake it. I'm no carpet installation expert. 
But what this does prove, if I can do it, you can probably handle it. I will say, compared to the other carpets I've installed, doing mass back carpet, it's going to take you an extra 20 minutes or more. You're going to work up more of a sweat. You're going to have a harder time getting to fit. But in the end, I think the sound deadening effect, the insulation, the heat barrier that it provides, it's well worth it. Hey, Lynn, come check out your car, see what we did. Hey, you changed my carpet, man. Whoa! Hey, this is that mass back that we've got, too. This is nice. When did you do this without me knowing? Oh, we you kept me busy. Yeah, we kept you busy. Cool, this is great, man. Look at that. This is awesome. Well, I'm glad you like it. Man, it really makes the car look nice now. I've been needing that for a while. Well, take it for no a more spin. rims. All right, well, let's see if there's any noise reduction. Yeah, I need to figure that out and see how that stuff is working. Let's do that. <laughs> cool, thanks a lot, man. This is great, Don. We appreciate it. All right. You're welcome.